Good morning, everyone. John here with FMP Wargamers, and this is the FMP Morning Show. It's our second week going into the FMP Morning Shows, and it's gonna looks like it's gonna stick uh, to our format. I think we're gonna keep this schedule going. People seem to like the channel, so I think uh, test run is successful. So I'm gonna recap a little bit of yesterday. Yesterday I was fighting off a migraine, and I was very uh, a lot of things I was talking about was very garbled, so I apologize for that. I'm going to try, excuse me, try to make up for that today. So first, I finally realized what was bothering me about this model. So I was trying to be positive. So today we're going to go bad, good, bad, good. Yeah, we're going to left lay off. We're going to leave off with something good. So. First, let's start with this. <clears throat> Let me pull up my sleeves here, stretch a little bit. All right. So, I, I can't draw on this here. I, I guess I could have put up an image where I could draw, but I want you to take a close look at this model. Now, we already know that space brains are very large individuals. I believe they're standing around just over seven feet tall, out of their armor, coming in at 700 plus pounds without the armor on average. And then it's another 180 kilograms. So what is that? 306, uh, probably close to 400 pounds with the regular standard suit of power armor. I forget what the weight actually is of the Terminator armor. I'll get that if anybody's interested in it. I'll get that for you. So take a moment. Look at. Let's start with the legs and the torso. Tell me what's wrong there. As I drink a, take some drink from my coffee. I'm going to walk it through it. This is, I think, a bad sculpt because that torso is very small based on where his head is sitting. Uh, the proportions right here in the center from where the pelvic, uh, the bottom of the pelvic would be area would be all the way up to his neck. It's a, it's a, it would be okay. However, when you put those legs in there, now the legs are a little longer than they probably should be because you remember these things are proportional those legs are a little longer than they should be and it's giving I mean right now his his feet should be based on on this on his where his torso and head is his feet should be somewhere at the um, at the base of where this grieve uh, the armored grieve is not where his feet are but more likely up here but you could be saying John that's where space Marine's foot normally sits it's and it's all power actuators and exoskeleton blah 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 okay I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt now I want you to take a look where his head is his neck is right here where my icon is it's dipping down here below his collar all right I want you to take a look at where his arms are. His arms are parallel, his shoulders, sorry, his shoulders are parallel where his head is. Well, you know, John, he sticks his arms in there and it slides down. No, nope, no, nope. don't try to pull this one on me. Look at this model. Look where his head is. Look where his shoulders are. Look where his arms are. It is, so you see me right here, or you see yourself in a picture or in a mirror. Got my head, got my shoulders down here. Cool. He looks like this is what it kind of looks like. If his arms and his shoulders were all like that, maybe he would be like walking around like this. But right now, the proportions on this are way off. And I was going to try to give uh, GW the uh, you know the benefit of the doubt. Bad sculpt. I don't know. Uh, they they. They should have given it back to the sculptor or the 3D imager or whatnot. Should have given it back to him and said, hey, uh, your proportions are off. We need to, the, the, the arms need to come, the shoulders need to come down. And even his head looks like it's a little too far forward. Do something with the legs. Yeah, your proportions are just off. You're missing the mark. Almost like, especially if you 3D printed the, or uh, used a 3D uh, uh, CAD software, whatever the software is, I'll have to ask my friend, uh, uh, crumb about that but it's almost like when he was like copying and pasting maybe he like highlighted the body and it accidentally he instead of lining up everything correctly 
he you know slipped took his finger off and he's like yeah that looks right and just hit save and walked out and and, and then said hey it's good it's almost like it's just there was a hiccup with the uh like he didn't finish editing the model and they were like yeah it looks good enough it looks proportional without printing one off first and going whoa whoa todd you need to kind of fix this model your your the arms don't make sense the the legs are a little too long and they don't suck it in really based on how the the torso proportions and everything the model's off now if you just take that torso uh, from the pelvic up to the head and even the the cowl and the the housing pretty much the entire upper torso minus legs and arms the model would be good they need to fix those legs and arms, but they're not going to because that model is going to be released on Adepticon. So, yay, we're going to get a model that's never going to go into actual production because these type of models that they do, you know, event exclusive only, don't go for uh, go out to retail. They will uh, unless they have like a marketing plan for hey, three four years down the line, we're going to put this out. But if you uh, got the model at the event, then you've got it, you know, several years ahead of everyone else. So still looks cool, but when you, uh, I, I, especially if you've been playing this game for years and you are putting a lot of money and investment into it, you expect quality. And this is not a quality model. This is almost what I would expect from a Forge World exclusive model and you know, just not being finished. But since this is going to be likely plastic, I'm a little disappointed in Games Workshop on this one. I could still see if, when I'm at Adepticon, I'll probably still pick it up, but I'm going to chop it apart and the, I'm going to replace, I'm, I'm going to be using this for other stuff, not for this. Uh, I mean, I don't even know who uses Terminator Librarians anymore, but whatever. So a little bit more information about these two. Uh, they will be available next year and it looks like, and it, already the rumors have started, that it's not going to be Weekender exclusive. I'll explain. When this book is released, the, um, what is it called here? Sorry. The Regent's Shadow. This is part two in the series. When this releases, that this will be an exclusive on Games Workshop's website. And it'll probably be a two, two miniature box, probably around $50. And you'll be able to get it for a limited time while the book is available. Very similar to that Coma Star that came out recently. And the Sisters of Battle, the Valerian, uh, not Valerian, uh, the one from the first edition book or their first printing of their codex, uh, the John Blanche art, and then of course Amara, the one that came out earlier this year. So it's going to be a limited time only if everything looks right. But once again, these are rumors the day after they release the information. So I'm a little skeptical. But it does make a certain kind of sense, especially when they highlight it on here. It might be a Weekender exclusive, but I think, I honestly, I think if uh, if it, that book is sold at the same time as that 2020 Weekender, you're going to be able to pick this model up via the Games Workshop website or your friendly local gaming store. So I'm happy about that. Even the Christopher Walken looking head, which this head, this head is, the proportions are a little bad. They're a little bad. I'm sorry. Um, it it it's too big. Uh, I think the the height is just a little too much. Even if you just go basically where the uh, the top of the head would be, like my bald head, and it feels like the they they need to drop it down like half a size. If that makes sense. Like if it's 3.5 millimeters, then it needs to be uh, three millimeters or maybe 2.5 somewhere in that range. She looks stately. She looks perfect. Leave her. In fact, make more. Uh, we, we need our characters. And this would probably be the first HQ choice, which is a sign of things to come. What I've mentioned before, that Adeptus Custodes. Of course, we know that they're going to be getting a new book probably sometime next year around when they're going to be a big uh, player in the Psychic Awakening. Expect them to get their new book and a couple new models. And I w if... The information I passed before, months and months and months ago, that Sisters of Battle, or sorry, Sisters of Silence will probably be making her, their way into the book. I hope they stick to that name, Talons of the Emperor. I think that's a good book. You can combine both Adeptus Custodes and the Sisters of Silence in there because they're not going to be in the Index of Stardis anymore. And yes, they do have 
uh, or not the index, but the index, uh, well, the Warhammer 40,000 indexes. They're not going to be doing those anymore. They're not going to the Warhammer Legends line, so they need a home. And I'm pretty sure they're going to pop up in that Adeptus Custodes book. That could very well be the Agents of the Imperium book that I, excuse me, had talked about coming out this year, um, early in the year. But that did not come to fruition. We got a bunch of other things. And, in fact, the Inquisition comes out four days. We'll see the Inquisition in four days. So, anyways, these are coming. More than likely, they will be available for retail, but for a limited time. If you're interested in grabbing them, grab them. Grab them while you can. All right, so let's get on to the really cool thing. So, we've kind of we started at a low, started coming back up with informative. Now, we're going to talk about something really cool. So, first glimpse into the Psychic Awakening 2, Faith and Fury, coming out on the 29th. And it is going to be full of stuff. Now, I already scoured over this, uh, one of the images. And if you take some time, Games Workshop likes to squeeze in you know, images of new models or new art when you least expect it. And I, I went ahead and double checked. There's no, nothing new here, not that I could tell at least. I don't see anything uh, except for classic uh, Black Templar stuff. Hellbrick, the Emperor's Champion, which we thought was going to be a... Uh, brand new model, Primarist. We were wrong. I think I might have to shave. I'll have to go back and check my videos. I think I might have to shave my beard for that. And then I can't see Grimaldus, but I do see his Cenobites, or at least the telltale signs of there uh, of him. He's down here somewhere. I, I'm not even going to bother. He's down there in the, in the left-hand corner. So what is coming in this book? My God. Let me make sure. The, okay, graphics are doing good. All right. So once again about 20 pages and not even really that once you uh, condense everything uh, the paragraphs and whatnot in when they tell the story for psychic awakening it's probably about 10 to 15 pages or 12 to 15 pages but it, the way they spread it out and do all these little shadow boxes here and there it's clever it's like hey look 20 pages for this exciting galaxy shattering galaxy involved uh, everybody's involved uh campaign we're just gonna give you like 20 pages of stuff it, you don't need any more details trust us you don't so cool they're doing the pages they're doing a whole bunch of pages of work there missions we're seeing that we already saw that in phoenix rising cool now here's something that's a gonna make some people happy and b gonna piss some people off so adeptus astartes Yep, they're getting more stuff, ladies and gentlemen. They are getting more stuff. Chill out. You're getting stuff too. You just gotta wait. So, we got nine pages here of new material. Master of the Chapter, Chapter Litanies, Master of Sanctity, or Masters of the Chapter, Chief Librarian, Master of the Force, Chief Apothecary, Chapter Ancient, Chapter Champion. What are all those? You'll be seeing them a little, in just a little bit, but they are new stratagems that, that revolve around those people and then we're going to get into the black templars a little looks like about a two to three page uh maybe four pages with the zealous crusaders so uh, probably about three to four pages of their history cool and then and talking about the characters so probably about that might be actually end up being about two pages of characters where they'll just like they'll have like hellbrick up here and a little couple paragraphs and then uh, Grimaldus and the Emperor's Champion and the Crusader Squads just uh, to kind of talk about them. Then we get their their uh, data sheets. Now we don't know currently, and I couldn't. I tried zooming in on the chapter or uh, High Marshal Hellbrick data sheet. I could not. I could not tell if there was any differences between the data sheet that was that's in downloads on the Warhammer Community page. Or if it's all brand new stuff. So right now it's just a safe bet, ladies and gents, that is no additional information. They're not primarist. None of those people are primarist. There's not gonna be a primarist crusader squad. It's at least assume that it is verbatim from that download sheet. Now there might be some slight tweaks to like say Hellbrick's uh, chapter master ability. And uh, I imagine Grimaldus is probably gonna be able to pop two um two strat or sorry two litanies instead of the one in fact i'm betting he's going to have 
the ability to choose three litanies and looks like they're getting their own litanies warlord traits stratagems and we already expected that and it's only one page of stratagems so that's probably going to be one two three four five six i would say six to eight stratagems crusade relics another page uh probably the same thing about f four to six relics point values that's for all these uh, data sheets up here tactical objectives it's basically a mini codex like we already said was going to come and that is basically a 15 page mini codex that's not too bad we knew it was going to be a mini codex i'm happy about that i think you guys should be happy about that too i really don't care about these name generators it's, it's a little silly but it's almost like it's a filler it's a filler page they need to include it in there okay cool thank you so let's get into the heretics astartes champions of ruin are going to get a little looks like it's uh they're just going to talk about things and then uh those are probably going to be and i, I in fact i think the demon weapon it, demon weapons already has a stratagem i think those two are stratagems and we'll see that in a minute each of these legions here so pretty much all the with the exception of the uh black legion unless i'm missing something here looks like everybody but the black legion the death guard and thousand sons so the three that pretty much already have uh tons of stratagems are going to be getting warlord traits stratagems artifacts tactical objectives name generator they're basically getting like a five page mini decks so this is going to help you really fl uh, flush out your legion especially all of you like Krom it jumps on here he loves iron warriors this will be a good chance for him to delve back into his iron warrior chap or um, uh, army and he'll be able to flush it out so it looks like going to be a full page warlord traits stratagems artifacts the same thing we saw over there with black templar so once again about six warlord traits since it's its own page uh stratagems probably four to six i would or sorry six to eight stratagems and i'd say four to six artifacts so really cool the tactical objectives are only there if you are playing maelstrom of war so that's not something if you don't play maelstrom war games it's no big deal but still give a look over because if you do end up playing the game in the future with maelstrom of war then you at least you'll have an idea oh i gotta include these tactical objectives so i'm very happy to see that everybody is getting something even though that this is considered one faction of the 24 factions coming for um uh coming for the uh gosh darn why can't i think of it for the entire psychic awakening it's only two factions in here adeptus astartes and heretic astartes it's still cool that this is in there so let's move on to a couple of the other releases once again uh now you'll see let's see apothecary I don't, I don't know what this is just more galleries there's probably be about three or four pages of galleries don't look for any new models uh but as i said it's about 60 pages of new rules so that's a lot of rules so here are those things i was talking about so um adeptus astartes you can see the Ma chapter litanies master sanctity all that stuff that is where we're going to get into some of the first of these so essentially they're, they're pretty much what we're going to be um you cannot include two masters sanctity this is pretty much a one use only uh stratagem uh this model get, knows one additional litany for litany's battle and can recite one additional litany so that's probably going to grimaldus is probably going to have that on the get-go so when you we'll, we'll see if that happens but i have feeling they're going to update his information like i was saying that they're probably going to update the information and bring those uh free downloads into uh essentially rules compliant faq compliant um order so okay cool master sanctity this is something that can be able to apply to all space marine chapters uh, across the board what we don't know does well it says space marine stratagem so well it'll be interesting to see if we get to apply these to blood angels dark angels space wolves i seriously doubt gray knights are going to get it because that's just not their thing they they're kind of outside that uh structure hierarchy and everything that uh adeptus astartes uses we've seen that many times before so high scholar of the librarius looks like another warlord can generate oh this is a warlord trait uh this warlord can generate psychic power from any discipline that they can know from rather than generating psychic powers from only one interesting that's interesting and I'd be also interested to see what this, where is it here? Uh, Chief Librarian stat hat or uh, chapter ability. 
I have a feeling it's going to be just like the Blood Ravens have, where they can deny one, they get one more power, and they can deny uh, one extra time. I, I I would say, in fact, I'm going to do the pull up that image later for the evening show. I have a feeling that that's going to be pretty much a carbon copy of what the Blood Ring, Blood Ravens have, and now every Space Marine chapter will be able to have it. The Endurant Protector, the Master of the Forge, add one of the toughness characteristics of a model with this relic. Model with this relic has a 4 plus invulnerable save. <laughs> that's actually kind of cool. Uh, that's actually really cool. So you're not going to be able to add this to, say, the Forge, uh, the Iron Father, Pharos, because I don't think you can add on other um, Warlord traits. Or, oh, it's, or relics. Yeah, so you can't add relics. So he's not going to be Super Guy. But if you want to make something. Uh, especially if you're doing an Iron Hand successor, successor chapter and you don't want to run the Iron Father, this would be a good way to keep him alive. Now he's toughness five. He's got a four up and vulnerable save when they normally don't. And you give him a couple Warlord traits and he can be kind of a poor man's uh, Iron Father. So we didn't forget about Chaos Base Marine. So here's the first of, uh, I guess it's a relic. In the fight phase when this model is chosen to fight with for the first time that phase, roll a d6 on a 1. That model suffers a mortal wound and cannot use a weapon further that phase. And that's something that I believe was in 7th edition. Might have been 6th edition or 5th edition. Uh, they had something like that. That uh, if you swung the demon weapon, you rolled a 1. Uh, crap, you take some damage and you're done fighting. But it was high risk, high reward, or low risk, really. Low risk, I don't know, I think it would be high risk if you can't do all your attacks. But if you fought, you or if you used it, or you're successful, you got tons of bonus attacks. But anyways, on a two plus, that will, that the model can fight with the weapon as normal. Um, that's phase. That's weird. Why would you? Okay, I'm gonna have to figure this one out. On a one, the model suffers one. Why would you want to take this? On a two plus, that model can fight with the weapon as normal. Is there more to it? I hope there's something. Oh, so you are getting demon weapons. So this is the demon weapon overall rule. And then here's an example of a demon weapon. Now I gotcha. So that's very similar. Okay, so it's still being like the old edition or last edition or six editions demon weapon. So a hey, take Zal the Wrathful. If you roll that one, you're not gonna be able to use it. But on a two up, you're gonna be able to use it. Uh, power sword or health force sword you're replacing uh, minus minus five AP two damage and when rolling for this weapon's demon ability on a two plus add a number to this weapon strength equal to the results until the end of this phase holy crap uh, you get to you can get up to a strength 10 holy crap you can get up to a yeah uh, conceivably a strength 10 minus five two damage attack imagine that on a um corn berserker character holy crap so that's pretty potent i don't know what's going to happen here and that is just kind of like skimming the surface because look at they, they they're gonna each of these guys are gonna have a full page of artifacts so how many of those are gonna be demon weapons my guess is probably one per legion and it'll be definitely if their legion is kind of aligned with a like a world eaters with corn and emperor's children with um oh my gosh not fulgrim slanesh sorry with slanesh uh it'll be kind of aligned with uh or have that flavor that you would expect from the uh from that being under that god or that chaos mark so really interesting to see everything that they're getting there I'm pretty excited. Uh, so we're going to go, we're going to take a little bit of a dip. We're going to talk slightly negative. I'm just going to highlight some stuff. So Sisters of Battle, the Adeptus Sororitas army set that's coming out on Black Friday. I'm going to, man, I really, I'm going to apologize to the Warhammer store um, operators and or hobby specialists, whatever you're called these days, managers and also the Games Workshop store managers. Um, cause I, have, having been one, I understand you want to sell, sell, sell. I'm going to be encouraging everyone 
out there, go to your friendly local gaming store. Now, if a Warhammer store and or Games Workshop store is the only one that's local for you, then go there, support them. But for everybody else, go to your favorite local game store, uh, whether it's Atomic Hobby Shop, Fat Ogre, Games and Hobby, Hobby Chest in um, Jacksonville, North Carolina, uh, anywhere that you like to go and buy this stuff and see if they are going to be doing a 5, 10, 15% off pre-order. Get that extra 10, 15% off because this thing is marked up 33%. And I know VAT tax is 15%, but there's no, I don't understand the, and I'm going to say approximately 33%. It could be like 32.75 or 31.75. I don't know. Uh, it's definitely 30% increase. How do I know? I went in and did some price checking. The uh, Currently, it's 125 um, British pounds, which live market says it's $160 US um, or, you know, depending on what the, uh, uh, it's just $160 US. So doing some reverse math, it comes out to, because um, we're buying, here in the US at least, I'm sorry for Canada and Australia, New Zealand, everybody else that are, I, I'm not going to do your guys' uh, price hikes. I'll let you figure out the math yourself. I go to xe.com for live exchange rate updates. So $210 versus its actual market value of 160 That comes out to approximately 32 some odd percent increase. Now the VAT tax is 15%. And that we only had ever had to deal with that when we tried ordering Forge World stuff, but now Games or Games Workshop is tacking on essentially an extra at minimum fifteen uh, percent onto the bat tax, which we never had to really cover before. They're 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 price gouging us. They are. This is a very uh, it's an unfair. I would say I would dare to say it's an unfair business practice. Uh, this is bad business and I want to highlight this that this is wrong they, they should not be doing this so don't support their stores I mean we know you're gonna buy it we know you're gonna buy it you know you're gonna buy it I'm gonna probably buy it I'm not gonna buy straight from games workshop I'm gonna put that money into the hands of the local stores because I know I'm gonna get it you know you're gonna get it for yourself or somebody else but at least go to those local stores where you know that you know Every week that they do pre-orders, they do around 10, 15% off to, you know, help encourage customers to buy from them. So go to your local store. Don't go to Games Workshop. Don't go to uh, Warhammer Cafe or Citadel, whatever, whatever your local actual official GW store and spread the word that especially those of you that watch that you do your own channels, YouTube channels, um, Facebook, everything show the show the the truth here they're gouging at least here in the u.s i knew that australia was always getting getting stuck with it but this is ridiculous and it doesn't stop there uh, we got this right here so once again we're going to slight slight uh dip down in a little negative yeah, i don't want to say negative it's really just kind of like sending up uh red flags popping flares um warning alarms so on the same weekend that that's coming out we have the vanguard space marine box the new start collecting box which i was hoping at the very least they would have included the infiltrators from the uh the new infiltrator rain well they didn't the entirety of this box which it is still a good box it is a it is basically the space not I mean basically it is the space marine half minus the librarian and the um, and the captain, sorry, the Phobos captain and the Phobos librarian, minus those two, but included with uh, everything else. And it's $95 US. Same thing over here with the Chaos Space Marines, except the Chaos Space Marines, as far as I could tell, are getting everything that was in the box. I could be wrong. I don't, I didn't pay too much and I should have, I should have jumped on that. They might be missing uh, something. I don't know what. You guys jump in the chat, let me know. But I, I think they're missing something. 
Yeah, Master Possession, Obliterator, Chaos Base Marines, and the, the Creepy Crawly Spider thing. So this one is already down two models, and they're charging $95 for it. When you could buy, you could split a spear, uh, the Shadow Spear box with a friend, it costs you guys about 80 bucks uh, a piece, and you're getting two more models, at least for the Vanguard Space Marines, at $15 less than what they're doing. Now I went ahead and just checked uh, current market prices. It's about $77 uh, US currently, and I understand, you know, I in the past Games Workshop has accounted for that. They've had kind of a wonky math, but it's only been a cut within a couple dollars. Not a, I think this one was 26%. Uh, let's see if I can pull this up here. So let's see. Uh, 23, sorry, 23%. So 8% over uh, the, the current dollar value. So that still is ridiculous. There was no need for that. At best, this box should have been $85 because you're missing several characters. So that's that's my rant. Put it out there. Spa the These two boxes and the Sisters of Battle box, a little ridiculous on price. Uh, now I'm going to go into the Forge World stuff I've been talking about or trying to talk about for the past couple days. This is not necessarily a warning sign, but I already told you that they were having troubles there at Forge World. We're starting to see some issues happening, and that's not good. That's not good, but it's also kind of funny. I'm not going to go into a whole spiel about uh, the quality of the models going down. I'm not going to go into a spiel about uh, Horus Heresy delays and all the shenanigans going on with that and the price increases. We know it's like 25%, I think, on average. For them to sell here in the U.S., which is ten at least ten percent above the VAT tax that we would normally pay if we shipped it over here without the free shipping, so kind of a dick move. Anyway, so we're seeing stuff no longer available. We expected that to happen. This model is old and not one of their best sellers, but I have a feeling as they sell these things down that they're not gonna be redoing the molds. And I would say within the next few years, I'm gonna give it a generous three to five years, we're going to see more and more of the Forge World models. And this is my guessing based on opinion, based on uh, facts and evidence and little rumors that I've passed on kind of haphazardly or kind of chaotically, I guess, that we're gonna start seeing more and more items become unavailable. What won't become available for a while, I think, are the specialist games, which we've seen a rapid increase in the uh, their <laughs> specialist game models and upgrades and everything else. We've seen a rapid decline in the Horse Heresy products and the Games Workshop and AOS products. Rapid decline of all of those and an incline or increase in specialist games. That's a warning sign. We already know that they're pulling the rules team from Forge World over to um, to the Games Workshop side. All rules, well, not the rules team, but all rules for 40K, AOS stuff, everything is gonna be handled in-house at Games Workshop. Uh, the only thing that Forge World will do sometime, maybe late 2020, maybe early 2021, we might see book nine for uh, Horus Heresy, but I doubt it. We're probably not gonna be seeing book 13 is it 12 or 13? I think it's book 12, which was supposed to be Red Scorpions versus, uh, help me out here, Red Scorpions versus Tau and also Elysian. I think it was Elysian drop troops were in there. I don't think we're going to be seeing that book now. And God help us if they, actually, I don't even, God help us. I, I don't even think they're going to be doing the book for um, Chaos, not Chaos Space Marines, but the... Gosh, darn it, why can't I think of this? Adeptus Custodes. They put out that PDF, and they said that there was going to be an Adeptus Custode books in the future. They didn't promise it. They just said that that was slated. I don't think we're going to see it. I don't think we're going to see it. If we do, sometime next year, and it'll be kind of, it won't be a big, grandiose release. It'll be just, hey, here's your Adeptus Custodes book. And also, we threw in, you know, uh, we're going to throw in Sisters of Silence stuff, and we're going to throw, they're just basically going to create an index, really. That's my guess. Another model, not a big seller. 
Uh, they shouldn't even have bothered with this because it went nowhere. And that's what happens. They put out some some interesting models, even these class this classic uh, 40K and fantasy race. Yes, 40K race back in uh, Rogue Trader days. They some okay looking sculpts. They weren't bad, but without you without them supporting it. It just kind of like, oh, hey, we got this great idea. Here's some models. We're going to, this is going to be awesome. And then they don't support it. And it just, it just tanks. It goes down the drain. So once again, bad stuff happening at uh, Forge World. I'm going to try to get some more information because I really, really want to, I'm not trying to be vengeful. I'm just very upset with Games Workshop in general and how they've been handling things. So I, uh, if I can stick it to them, I think I'm going to, I know it's kind of rude, but I'm, I and other gamers are just tired of getting screwed. We're just tired. So another short story about psychic awakening, really cool. So now we're going to come up. So I've got some information. I'm going to give credit over onto fate to 12. Um, if you get a chance, go over there and check out his website. It's more turned into an informational now instead of leaking rumors, which is just fine because they had an issue with uh, some really bad leakers. I knew some of them. Heck, I was one of them at a point in time. Uh, one of the good ones, not one of the bad ones. I only gave you know credible information with backed up support. Uh, so they did an interview. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I got, I already told you, I got some a data dump over the weekend. I had to dig through it. And I... From this this one particular source it wasn't Mr. and Mrs. Smith and it wasn't Todd. It was another source that they were talking about the upcoming book three when they're talking about Blood Angels and uh, Psychic Awakening. Book three, sorry, book three, Psychic Awakening with Blood Angels and Devastation of Ball and all the whatnot that's going on there. So I I had a feeling he the the individual that passed that information to me has almost been carbon copy of what I found on a couple other pages. So I went ahead and checked and some of the information he had synced up with those pages. Cool. It happens. It, it very well happens. Sometimes some of the stuff almost was verbatim. And then he did have some information that was not on there. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, but still I want to give credit. It was announced on fate Two Twelve, and you can read over it. It's about the blood angels. Uh, over there on, on his page give a big shout out to them in fact I will pull up the page so you can see what it looks like so you'll know what to look for it oh sorry <laughs> uh, there we go fate 212 so fate I mean I might be pronouncing that wrong you guys might know the site anyways he has a little article in here about the horse heresy weekender and there's one down here about Mephiston and Dante revelations from the black library weekender that happened over the weekend this last weekend so uh, this short story right here has nothing to do with it. I'm just going to be talking about it. So, um, in, in the Imperium Nihilus, that's the other side of the, uh, of the black or not the black, but the, uh, well, the big, the new terror inside or tear big psychic, uh, tear in the galaxy. I, I can't even think of what it's called right now. Uh, it looks like it's going to be considered the capital for the, the, uh, the Imperium Nihilus, which is pretty much the Imperium is like, okay, you guys are on your own. We we can't help. We're going to try, but we can't. So after Devastation of Ball uh, versus Tyranids and, um, well, they, I think the Shield of Ball was against the Tyranids. They had the Necrons helping. Devastation of Ball was uh, more Tyranid stuff. Dante fought a... Um, Super Swarm Lord, uh, I believe uh, Kabbalah or Kabbalah, da, la, 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 la. the big uh, corn demon that's always been plaguing the Blood Angels since the Horus Heresy came in to help out. Big Cluster F uh, went on and they were left pretty much devastated where they had to call in all the chapters, including the Knights of Blood, who, I, from what I've read, they, they're they gone now. They're dead, even though they were considered excommunicate excommunicate traitorous or whatever it's called they came back they answered the call they came back to fight alongside their brothers and let's let's be fair the knights of blood were not chaos they 
just got sanctioned because they are very bloodthirsty. They did a lot of naughty things. And so they, they paid the price. But they came back to help their brothers out. Um, I think they were wiped, they eventually were wiped out. Spoiler alert, sorry. Um, so a lot of revelations have come out since then. Dante is looking like he is old as fudge. Old as fudge. Uh, we already knew he was over a thousand years old prior to the return of Gilliman and the whole ninth, eighth, edi or sorry, eighth edition going on. So he's already an old man. We knew he's doing bad. He's looking rough. He's even more rough because now it's like about 200 years after that. So it's, the guy's old. He is over, he's probably pushing 1300. And so we knew he's not getting Primaris. I don't even think he could survive being Primaris considering younger, healthier, you know, by like centuries. Um, people half his age or less were barely surviving. So I didn't think he would, but it looks like, um, now this could be a shock. I don't think, based on the information I was reading, that Mephiston is going to be Primaris. I think he is just kind of reading the information. He might just be super beefy now. Uh, after the events of the Psychic Awakening, the Peril Nihilus, the Devastation of Ball, he got super charged. He is like super badass now. Um, and, the book, and the books are talking about how he has essentially separated himself. I don't know if, if this is a psychological thing or physically. I don't think it's physically because I'm sure they would have been like, oh, we got to kill him because he is now three different people. But he has basically three modes. At least in narrative wise, he has the normal, hey, I'm I'm a blood angel, librarian, chief librarian, I'm badass, I'm the physical side. Um, his psychic powers are, then he's got his psychic sense or spiritual sense where he is just off the charts powerful now. And he was already pretty powerful before, he already fought out the Black Rage, he's super powerful, psyker, now he's just got a nice big boost, maybe because of Psychic Awakening. Because it's a tie-in with the Psychic Awakening. And then they've got the Bestial side where he... The way, since they're basically space vampires, I think it's, uh, hey, I'm I, I'm triggered and I'm going full-on vampire, bestial vampire mode where I'm going to be whooping ass and I'm going to have a hard time coming down until I satiate that need for blood. And so basically you've got three modes of... Mephiston going on, whether that will translate into the 40k tabletop version, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be Primaris now, based on that. And this is really me just kind of my opinion. I have nothing else to real. I have nothing really to back it up. I think it's going to be Primaris size, but I don't think it's going to be Primaris. I don't. I I I don't think anybody's going to want to mess with them. Anyway, so everything that's going to be going on. Blood Angels are kind of getting their update with the Primaris. Uh, there's lots of politics going involved and you know what the future of the blood angels is in question so we're going to be seeing uh, some more information about the about the primaris marines popping up which is going to be good we're going to get a little bit more insight into them and if you haven't already gotten some uh, if you haven't read like the spears the emperor or the emperor spears book where they you really kind of delve into the um, to the nature of the primaris marine you're missing out I would highly recommend you give it a look through. It's definitely a fantastic book. Aaron Dembski Bowden, I believe, wrote that. So watch it when you can. Oh my gosh, I'm way over my time here. So I'm going to say on a high note, uh, Blood Angels are going to be getting a nice, nice boost come um, Psych Awakening 3. I want to say it's on the 7th or the, I think it's the 14th of December. I think that I'll have to double check my information, but I'm pretty sure it's the 14th of December is when that book drops. So yay, that's about two weeks after Psychic Awakening 2. Things are going to start speeding up now based on all the information that we're getting from Games Workshop and from our sources and leaks. So things are going to really speed up. I still don't think that and that's going to lead into this next segue right before I log off that uh, I don't think I still don't think Fulgrim is the big bad. I don't think he is the psychic awakening. Fulgrim is a potent individual, very deadly, but he is not something that's going to affect the, he's not going to be galaxy wide affecting. Mortarian would have been, Magnus would have been, they're more powerful than, uh, than, than Fulgrim. So I think he has a part to play in this, but he is not the big bad. And I don't think it's Slanesh 
Returning to Sunesh never went away during 40K Universe. That was AOS, completely different universe. So what do I have to say about Fulgrim? There is some information coming. I think people are kind of cherry picking, kind of like Bible thumpers. Uh, sorry, not Bible thumpers. Um, people with extreme religious views will cherry pick from their religious document documents to um, kind of make their point. And I think that's what some people are doing with this. They are cherry picking information and they're saying that the big the big thing with Fulgrim is going to be Fulgrim's going to return. <laughs> Fulgrim's going to return and there's also going to be good guy Fulgrim. So you have to read the, the there's a couple books out there. I, I don't remember the name. I'll get those names for the next show. But there's basically a clone version, a solid, perfect clone version or two of Fulgrim running around. So we're going to see a good guy Fulgrim and we're going to see a bad guy Fulgrim. It could be Fulgrim returning to the fold, uh, returning to the Imperium, redeemed. Uh, but that, or, or the other one are saying is the psychic awakening. Part of psychic awakening is the splitting of the Fulgrim who has been trapped inside. Essentially, the his soul and everything is trapped inside of the demon. We already knew that from the, several, of the, several of the Horus Heresy books. So that's the other thing that they're saying. And they're, like I said, they're cherry picking, but. Good Fulgrim is going to eventually split off from Demon Fulgrim. And Good Fulgrim will return to the Imperial Fold to help fight. Is that going to happen? I don't know. It's really salty. It's not even salty. It, I don't, not salty in a bad way. It's, 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 uh, it's pulling at strings, you know, strands, you know, pulling on threads. It's, I don't put a lot of stock into it, but there is a certain sense to it. And I want to be able to pass on rumors, leaks and everything to you all. So I have gone on way too long. I intended to get off a little bit sooner and try to break up the video, but there was a lot to cover, especially after my migraine Sunday. My name is John. I'm with FMP Wargamers. This is the FMP Morning Show. Make sure you hit that. Oh, I almost got it right. That subscribe button. Uh, YouTube folks, jump on over. Join us here on Twitch. Thank you for everybody that jumped on and watched. I really appreciate it. We at the channel really appreciate it, especially as we start moving towards um, a whole new programming. And we've got a bunch of things in store. Finally, we're getting making some headway into some new shows, some not necessarily live streams, but recorded games in the future, uh, especially when we get the FN Pro guys. There might not be an evening show tonight because I am going to be stuck at work. It might be a late show, 9.30 show. We'll see. Tomorrow at about 9 p.m. Central Time, I have the or the three FM Pro guys that went to Warzone Atlanta. We're coordinating, um, we're coordinating an effort to basically live stream tomorrow. We're going to be using Discord and OBS to basically get them all to getting all of us together so we can ask them questions. If you guys have questions to ask them, Facebook message us on at, uh, well, at our FMP Wargamers Facebook channel or in the comments, or if you're over on YouTube, put it in the comments there. I'll see the uh, indicator saying, hey, you've got messages, and I'll go check it out. I've already got a list of questions, so we're gonna be good with, I don't mind asking them more questions try to get about a 30 45 minute evening show so tonight probably not a show if uh if i'm going to if i've got the time it'll be about 9 30 but since it's going to be covering the infinity rpg i'll probably wait till wednesday because there's a lot of information to cover and we're going to be talking about the uh kind of skills resolution combat resolution all that sort of stuff so you guys have a good insight on how it works all right, so I've already streamed a little too long again. Damn, 50 minutes. I am so sorry, y'all. My name is John. Have a wonderful day. I know it's Monday, but just treat it as probably the best day of the week. And the rest of your week will follow suit. Just have a really good day. And...